So, this is a small demo on how to install Jupyter and how to use the web app Jupyter. So, let us just start by installing the Jupyter package. So, you can just give pip install Jupyter. So, I already had it in my cache. So, that is why you will see that it will just retrieve it from the cache and it will just install it. So, in this course, we will be using two IDEs, one is Spider and the other is Jupyter. And uh, you will see that some modules are with Spider, whereas the other modules are with Jupyter. And this is from a point of getting you accustomed to both of these IDEs. And from there on, you can always choose whichever you are comfortable with. So, this is going to be a small demo on how to introduce you to the IDE Jupyter. So, let us launch Jupyter Notebook now. So, you will see that since this is a web app, it will open with your default browser and this is how the interface looks. And what you will also see is that it directly opens to the C drive. So, under the C drive, you will see desktop documents downloads. Now, if you do not want this to open to the C drive, there is also a way to set the directory from the terminal itself. So, let us see how to do that. So, I have come to my command prompt now and you need to just exit out of the C drive here. So, you can give your corresponding drive uh, letter. So, for me it is D drive and from there I just do CD. So, this is the directory where I want my codes to be saved, right. So, I just do CD space D colon backslash Jupyter codes. So, this is the directory where I want my codes to be saved. Now, you can launch your Jupyter notebook from here. So, you will see that your directory is already set from the command prompt and it is empty because we do not have a file here. So, let us start by creating a python file here. So, you can click on new and you can just choose python 3. If you can recall from the earlier lectures, we would have emphasized on the fact that um, Jupyter notebook is basically a collection of input cells and uh, any input cells can have can hold codes, text, plots or any kind of description, right. So, by default, if you click on the cell, you will see that it is code. So, I am just assigning a value of phi to the variable a and in order for you to execute this cell, you can just click on run. So, this means that this line of code has already been executed. What you will also see is that uh, against the first cell, you will see a letter i n. Now, i n stands for input. You will also see a number within the square indices. Now, this refers to the line of code that you have run. If this is the first line of code that you have run, then it is 1, right. Now, if I again run this, then it becomes 2. Uh, though you are running the same line again and again, now this number will keep changing how many ever times you hit run, right. So, that is the only idea of this number. So, that is how you interpret this number that is within the square indices. So, now let us print the value of a and I am going to give the statement print. So, here you will see that the output is displayed just below the cell. The value of a is 5 and the output is printed below the cell and this becomes the third line that you have run and hence the number within the square indices is 3, right. So, let us just add some text. Now, in order for you to add some text, you just have to come out of the cell and you will see that the cell is highlighted as green. And once you come out, it gets highlighted as blue, ok. Now, you can click on the drop down and change the option from code to markdown. And this allows you to add text here. So, again you have to run the cell for the text to get displayed. And now you will see that the text is displayed. Though we had typed it in a cell, it still does not look like a code, right. It is it's a description more or less. And that is the advantage of using Jupyter because it, it allows you to have narrative text and you can also add descriptions. Now, instead of just typing it, I am just going to make it in bold. So, whenever you start with a hash and include a space, so that will basically make your text bold. And you can use these wherever you want to add any heading or a title to your notebook. 
and you can see that the font is big and it is also in bold. Okay. Now, you can always change this font by adding another hash. Now, instead of 1, I have added 2 and I have again run it. You can see that the text is still in bold, but then uh, the size has reduced. So, this is how you add a text or a description above your cell. So, let us say if I want to add a line of code above the description sample code, I just click on A from the keyboard. So, this adds a cell above. Similarly, if you want to add a cell below, you can just click on that cell and then hit B from the keyboard. So, A the letter A from the keyboard will add a cell above and the letter B from the keyboard adds a cell below. Right? So, this is one way to remember it. Similarly, if you want to delete a cell, just come outside of it and just click on D twice. So, these are some uh, operations with Jupyter Notebook that you want to be familiar with. And now, let us just save this file as sample code. So, I have saved it and you can also edit it from here. This is another way of doing it. And if you look at this, you will see that all your files are stored with an extension IPNB, which means it is IPython notebook. And this is something very specific to Jupyter. Now, throughout the course, uh, we will be integrating Jupyter uh, along with the spider interface and that is just to ease the purpose of demonstration. But then you can continue on using Jupyter separately as a web application. Thank you.